on point I'm sticking on joints and eating your flesh So I don't see you getting me off your back I'm bound to attack before you see me Before the hip-hop collective known as D-Block Europe would take over the UK rap scene with their unfiltered takes on the streets and some truly explicit sexual lyrics. Adam Nathaniel Young Ads Williams and rookie Earl Dirtbike LB Banton would be born on July 29, 1995 and October 30th, 1996 respectively. These two developed the kind of chemistry that you can't fake by spending a good portion of their youth together, forging their friendship on the streets of South London. They first met at Cadford Sledge Hill Academy and bonded over the fact that their older brothers knew one another. Doesn't take much for guys to make friends, you know? If you pass each other enough times in the hallway, you're friends now. Men, they know how to be friends. Anyways, neither one of them enjoyed their time in Sledge Hill, and both of them remember it being a rather inadequate educational institution that failed to prepare them for life in the real world. They explained to the face, boy, it was prison like HMP youth offenders. It's block training, street training, gang training. LB in particularly feels like the school set them up for a life on the streets and that the teachers spent more time fighting with students than teaching them anything of merit. Of course, it also didn't help that their home life didn't offer much in the form of rules or structure either. Bando baby, like, I'm a bando baby. I was raised in a bando. See what I'm saying? A lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of the youths were doing this good boy thing or whatever. Even when we was doing a good boy thing, it was in the trap. Ads could always get away with doing whatever he felt like and was never given any rules by his family members, which primarily consisted of his older brother, who was always out working the streets himself and didn't have time to do things like hover over his baby brother. And as such, Ads remembers smoking his first spliff at the age of nine and by 13, he was a regular toker. When asked why their parents weren't more adamant that their children stick to a clean, narrow path, Ads explained to the face, I think smoking alcohol, drugs have been part of my parents' lives. It was a big part of my upbringing. It's easier for you to do that when you see that. LB's dad smokes as much weed as him, so that's just normal to him. Despite the challenges they faced as kids, both LB and Ads agree that the most important aspect of their story is that no matter where you come from, no matter what your struggles in life are, or how little you might have, you can still climb your way to the top of whatever mountain you set your sights on. And for these two, that mountain just so happened to be hip hop. Ads was only seven years old when he first tried the rhyme influenced by the music his big bro was playing like Nas, Big L, and Cormega. This man liked his traditional hip hop. Meanwhile, LB was getting bit by the same music bug listening to Dizzy Rascal's seminal 2003 album, Boy in the Corner. Their biggest shared influence though was Lil Wayne. They explained why to the face by telling them, if you follow our journey, we're just doing a little version of what he does. He was the first to rap with autotune, the first to be so explicit on that wave with women. We don't write lyrics down either, and he was one of the first to do that. He just kept murdering the game. I wonder if there's any YouTubers out there that don't write their YouTube scripts down and just go at the camera. Inspired by one of the industry's most prominent voices, Ads would record and release his very first mixtape on MySpace at just 13 years old. The project's name, appropriately enough, it was titled The Prodigy. Looking to capitalize on this sudden emergence, Ads would continue to work his way up the hip hop circuit in London for the next couple of years. Eventually getting introduced to D-Block Records co-founder and hip hop icon Jadakiss at the age of just 15. One of the OGs, give me a kiss. Mm. Strong man. Pushed for a song, ended up being a whole movement. Yo, kiss heard it and was like, nah, can't just be a song or nothing like that. Kiss originally wanted ads to feature on a song, but wound up offering him a record deal with D-Block instead. Unfortunately, soon after that happened, things would go south. Ads explained the complex. It was supposed to be a short deal, but I came back to England, got in trouble, and couldn't go back to America. So we're over here and we're still D-Block. Europe. That's when me and LB came together and started rapping. Having hit something of a snag, ads turned lemons into lemonade by teaming up with LB in 2014 and spending the next few years honing their craft with one another. Then in 2017, they arrived on the scene dropping a series of singles, including Three Gutta, Large Amounts, and Trap House. Afterwards, the duo would continue to gain recognition and support from English media platforms like BBC's Fire in the Booth and the Westwood Crib Sessions before finally releasing their first project, Any Minute Now in July of 2018 alongside Young Bane. With this collaborative effort being so well received by UK audiences, it encouraged the duo to drop their first full-length project together, the mixtape titled Home Alone in early 2019. The single Kitchen Kings would quickly rack up numbers for them across social media and lead right into the release of two further mixtapes before the end of that year, PTSD in September and Street Trauma in December, which featured collaborations with the likes of Dave, Freddie Gibbs, and even Lil Baby. In fact, DB began blowing up so fast that by 2019, they sold out two separate shows at Alexandra Palace, 
venue that holds well over 10,000 people as a part of their PTSD tour. Having officially established themselves within their native country, the only thing left for D Block Europe to do was take over America. So that's what they set their sights on next. With how successful PTSD proved to be for D Block Europe, they decided to announce themselves to American audiences with the release of their single, Nookie, in collaboration with Lil Baby. And while some fans in North America immediately recognized the talent that these two clearly possess, most didn't. In fact, it would take Lil Baby shouting out the song on social media for American fans to really give them a chance. But once they got a foothold in the North American market, D Block Europe recognized the need to keep the pedal to the metal in order to really give themselves every chance possible to succeed. So they dropped three more projects over the span of the next three years. First came The Blueprint, Us vs. Them in October of 2020. Then, about a year later, they dropped the sequel to their first mixtape, Home Alone 2, in late 2021, a project that featured further big-time collaborations with artists like Central C, Tion Wayne, and Offset. Most recently, they released Lap 5 in the fall of 2022, a 16-track offering that puts DBE's journey front and center, charting their remarkable ascent to the top of the UK hip-hop scene while acknowledging their desire to take over the global market. Amazingly, they've managed to do all of this while remaining largely independent, having refused to sign another record deal after Ad's initial contract with Jadakiss ran its course and setting up a distribution deal with Universal Music Group instead. If you can make it work, it's a, it's a blessing, isn't it? Some deals are blessings, do you know what I mean? It all depends on the artist and what you're doing and how your brain's wired, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can be independent and be failing terribly. You can be signed and be yeah, failing, failing terribly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Today, D Block Europe has no doubt that they're going to accomplish whatever goals they set their minds to. Telling Complex, bro, we're going to be superstars. So none of this surprises us. We're grateful and thankful, but we're not content. And we just keep pushing. We want to do arenas. Wembley Stadium, that's just what we need to be doing. With Young Ads and Dirt Bike LB's presence now being felt far beyond the UK's borders, a goal like that seems nothing more than an inevitability. This duo's relentless work ethic and genuine connection they've built with their fans proves as much. I don't have any doubt that their creativity will continue to drive them forwards achieving a worldwide takeover. And who knows, maybe one day they'll be calling themselves D-Block Global. Of course, until that day comes to pass, we're just gonna have to keep watching these two talented artists to discover what truly comes next. I mean, after all, this has been before they were famous. Thank you for watching today's episode, and please be sure to let us know what you thought about D-Block Europe's story in the comment section down below. And once you're finished with that, please take a second to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss an episode, all that good stuff. And if you'd like to check out a few other entries in this series, then search for our looks into the come-ups of Dream Doll, Lee Drilly and DD Osama. My name is Clyde Smith and I'll see you guys in another video.